90% of the people that I see posting content online for their business are making this mistake. Hello there, familia. Hi, my Sky CEO. I am Julia Pagani. I talk about digital business, educational digital products with a little bit of brand strategy. That's where my main experience comes from. Brand strategy naturally evolved into launch strategy, business strategy. Strategy is strategy. Once you get that strategic sense, it's over. So I want to discuss one particular thing I've noticed and I've been noticing this for a few years, both from the audience perspective as well as on the expert perspective. And that is repetition. Feeling like your content is repetitive. So why do we create content, right? First is to grab attention, is to build a brand, to educate people, to entertain people, to reinforce our belief systems because we feel like we have something to aggregate in someone's life. When we talk about a funnel of content, when we talk about funnels in marketing or in strategy, that can mean multiple things. It isn't just sales funnel, there is a content funnel, that's for a Another video. Funneling basically means taking people from step one, from a place where they are now, to step B, which is the end of their journey. And we have sales funnels, we have product funnels, we have relationship funnels, and we have content funnels as well. You bring people from one channel to another. You bring people from your Instagram to your website, from your Twitter to your YouTube, it's part of it's part of redistributing your content. And the importance of having that structure is to lead people from a place of confusion to a place of confidence. For my work, that's important. But if you're doing full entertainment, that's another work. The other my work is educational. I'm here to educate people on a real online business. There's going to be nothing flashy here, no empty promises. I'm not going to put, a, put a, a sales revenue on your face. What I am about is bringing people into a place of, I don't know how to start, to this is my first step. And your content, your top of funnel content, should give people enough to gain a first transformation. And that's important because when you look at your product funnel, and I have, I always mention this video in all my videos, it is a cornerstone, it's a pillar content in this channel right now, so it's gonna be over here in the screen somewhere, and it works as a workshop, okay? It works as a workshop. It is styled as a workshop. You're gonna have your more accessible content if it's part of your strategy to have cheaper products, then that's the next thing. And then you're gonna have mid-tiered price, so around 200, 400 bucks courses and methodologies and so on. So watch that video so you can fully understand what I'm talking about after you watch this one. But your content is the first, your free content is the first step. And I get it that because you are in touch with your audience and when you are in touch with your audience or when you are looking to be in touch with your audience you're gonna find that once you structure that funnel that product funnel people will ask the same questions over and over again and you might feel like you are repeating yourself and let's talk about why 
you feel that way, why that's okay, and why you should actually be doing that anyways, okay? So first of all, people who are starting their journey, they have certain types of universal pains, okay? And you as an expert will identify that by talking to your audience, by running surveys. I'm not gonna give a full example here. And your content is gonna be structured a certain way that will clear those doubts. You will encourage people to take that first step. You will share your story and your experience so that you can build your authority. But when you provide that basic information to people, what you are doing is showing them that there is a way out. And that's important because it provides confidence to people. That happens, however, for example, if you open your analytics on Instagram, if you don't know how to do that, it's fine. Or if you don't have an Instagram, it's fine. You will see that your following and your follower, your following and your unfollowed count will go up and down every day. Or maybe someone who's not watching your stories because now they've unfollowed you, they might become even a client. Shocked? Well, the people that are watching certain types of content, they are not necessarily engaging or they are not necessarily buying. Top of funnel content is the basic content that is more can be more conceptual depending on your niche and will be repetitive because your audience is renovating often. So the reason why you feel like you are repeating yourself over and over again, like I always tell people to go back to that one video, certain content must be understood by your future students, your future clients, in order for them to gain a result. And that's the content that should be the free content. Giving everything out for free is a strategy, but your content will still be so basic because the language has to be basic, the structure has to be basic so that more people can understand because it's top of funnel. The thing is, the people that engage a lot, for example, are not necessarily the ones they are going to buy. And therefore, it's a funnel, right? So top of funnel content, then you're going to have some products. It's going to depend on your business model, exactly how you're going to structure those offers. But once you get that person through the funnel, your content should follow the way that they are learning. If they are advancing, they don't need the same language that you use. Think of them like toddlers to teenagers and adults. You don't talk to a three-year-old the same, or shouldn't talk to a three-year-old the same way you talk to a teenager. So it doesn't make sense even to have your content, top of funnel content, to have the same language, the same structure, delivered the same way to someone who is in your mastermind or working with you and you are doing them a sir, you are serving them with the solution through a service. It's called service because of that. Mm. And why do we provide? I don't think I've ever seen anybody even mentioning why do we provide top of funnel content in such a basic language and why it's even important to offer that basic information first. People have, and I think that's Abraham Maslow, I am not entirely sure. It's either Freud or Abraham Maslow. Google it. People have the same motivations and the same source of pains. Pains are universal. We create 
through our experiences and through our vision of the world, stories to relate that pain to another person. So maybe you aren't sleeping well because you were drinking too much coffee and maybe you don't even recognize that you drink that much coffee, okay? But a nutritionist might be aware that caffeine intake is an issue. <clears throat> Sorry. And therefore, she needs to bring that sort of awareness to her audience. And she does that through content. So through our content, through such basic and repetitive content, we are able to break the awareness levels through. So you take them from not knowing that something is even a problem to, hey, it, this could be the reason why. And then maybe the Joe reading the content on Instagram, let's say like that, will, well, okay, that that is, will tell himself that, well, that is indeed my issue. How do I solve it? So then she might, in another piece of content or in the same piece of content, give a possible solution, make her show her student social proofs of how they've improved their lives, how they've gained um, lean mass and lost fat, all of that. And then that person will feel more courageous to take a step forward. So you take people from not knowing that there is a problem to not knowing that there is a solution to knowing that there is a solution to the problem and that that solution comes through your products, your services. And we are lucky that we have so many different platforms to post for free in so many different formats because some people might not feel so comfortable with reading. They don't feel connected when they read for whatever reason. Some other people might prefer prefer <laughs> people learn in different formats and we are lucky to have so many social platforms to format our content to package our content long videos short videos long pieces of written context context long pieces of written text to shorter like twitter versus a blog post versus a email right email being the medium format when you do so many different formats and you repurpose your content so if i cut a piece of this video and put a reels put a tiktok put a shorts it's gonna feel repetitive and some people might feel like it's repetitive but repetition if you listen to something over and over again you start absorbing that as truth and you might as well feel more inclined to take action. So that's a third advantage to repeating your content or why you should repeat the content. And a fourth advantage actually would also be that once you teach those things over and over again, the same effect happens with you. You are more likely to remember the content, rem uh, absorb it in a way that it's easier for you to act on it. So that's why people say, if you wanna learn something, truly learn it, teach it to other people. I also say that it's not enough to teach other people. It's also good to execute that. Don't stay only on the concept. But Jules, how do I actually get to know what my audience needs? talk to them. You need to lose the fear. And it's so easy to say like that. You need to lose the fear of grabbing a camera and talking to yourself through that camera. Do you want to do that without people watching? Sure. Go on Instagram, go on the live function, turn the audience from all your audience to a private, I cannot remember what it's called, and use that tool to train, to train how you speak. 
listen, it is painful. Nothing is going to be easy ever. Forget that notion that there is easy this and easy that. It is simple, but it will always be somewhat painful when you have some kind of block, some kind of insecurity. But the only way to plow through that insecurity is sitting here and doing what needs to be done. You are not a child anymore to do only what you like. If you want to receive certain recognition for your work, if you want to be paid what you're worth, if you want to be heard, if you think, if you feel like what you have to say is useful, you kind of have to break through those insecurities somehow. And it's not gonna be fun, it's gonna be painful. People will judge, people will hate you here and there. It's one thing to talk to one person and be able to deal with it one on one and the other one is to talk from one to many. Some people are gonna disagree and that's okay. Hey, it's a fine. Hey, it's a fine. So repeating yourself is good, but you also can reinforce key concepts. I just did it. It's not easy, right? It is simple. It is going to be painful. I'm not gonna sit here and lie to you. Once you take people from one level of awareness to another, you can complicate the content a little bit. You can add more advanced or more intermediary. I wouldn't say add advanced information into your top of funnel content. Leave that for your mentees, your courses, your more advanced courses, your services, and your masterminds. Because those are people that understand the basics and they've heard the basics so much, I bit my tongue, that they have that as second nature. That's why we repeat. We repeat so that things can become second nature. As you advance as an expert, you relate even less to the people starting out. So you need to do two things. One, surveys, talk to people, what they are struggling with, go live. It's why it's so great to go live. We will like Q&A. And think back. It's why we always journal, why we document everything, because then you have that material to help you. It's your past self helping the future self. All those struggles, all those pains, it's going to be something that someone now is going through and that you can help with. But if you don't have that, you can ask people and you can try do this, doing a soul searching, looking back your story and your history and your experiences, trying to talk to people maybe that you might have had discussions with try to rescue that memory. So if you have even a small following on Instagram, on YouTube, on TikTok, start by relaying your experiences. Start telling your story. Open a question box after you've created, you've told a story, after you've talked about something very basic, like you can give a, a lesson in a few stories and then open for Q&A afterwards, make it interactive. Use the formats to your advantage. Go into other people's content and see what people are asking and map those things out. Think back how you experience experienced that start, that very start of your journey and how you can package that into content. And also don't forget to watch that first video. Bookmark that video because I want you to go back to it and rewatch it. As you grow, you will see how that video is gonna make even more sense. But start by watching it now, okay? Let me know what you think. Let me know if this made sense to you. I am 
Julia Pagani. I'm Julia Pagani in all the social media platforms. And I'll see you on the next one. Yeah. <laughs>